I see veterinary medicine as an experience for people and pets, and I wanted to do something different that created a different experience for them. My name is Autumn Fanning, and I am the founder and CEO and one of the principal veterinarians at Vets Here Mobile Veterinary Service. I knew I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was about 11 years old. So I've always, my parents recognized really early on that I needed animals in my life. We actually moved on a boat when I was about five years old and left the cat with grandma because my dad was just, we're not going to take a cat on a boat. That's not happening. We were on the boat for about six months and they bought me a kitten because <laughs> they knew that it needed to happen. So, so really early on recognized that. I was into horses really early on at like five or six years old. I wanted to be on a horse all the time. Um, and at about 11 is when everyone says I started making noise about being a veterinarian. So um, I spent a lot of time as a teenager riding with mentors, riding with veterinarians, just going out, doing all those you know, menial tasks to help out and just be present in the, in the situation and, and be there and watch. Um, I was able to do some things at veterinary clinics, you know, lots of poop scooping and dog walking and dog washing and things like that to, to just get myself in, in the door there. Um, which all helped me in the end because those were all hours that I got to count towards, you know, getting into vet school. So uh, when I went to college, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that my whatever my undergraduate degree was was just a stepping stone to the to the ultimate goal, which was the DVM degree. So I ultimately chose Oregon State because it had a an animal science program, and the animal science program was some of the best practical knowledge that I ever got. You know, it was, uh, veterinary school is very technical, medical, all of those sorts of things. An animal science degree really gave me the, the I was out lambing, I was, I, was, I was actually catching lambs, I was doing things with the cattle, I was doing all those sorts of things that I would have never gotten to do or had time to do in veterinary school. So it was a wonderful undergraduate education. Um, I was able to get into that program. They actually had an accelerated program that I was able to, to, to do. I mean, it really truly was just a stepping stone. It was how many credits do I have to take to apply to veterinary school as soon as possible. So, so that's what I did. Um, actually got into veterinary school after three years of undergrad and then went, stayed at Oregon State for, for veterinary school as well and, uh, and, and finished there and, and graduated. And then uh, I moved to Hawaii that's where uh, I was, was headed there for my husband's uh, uh, job at the time. And uh, so that's where I started practicing. I was in Hawaii for five years. And there really wasn't a job that was exactly what I wanted. So I kind of made my own. I worked for two different practices and did part-time horses and large animals and part-time small animals. And that's how it all started. So I always knew I wanted to own a practice. That was, that was part of the deal. I knew that this was something where I, my trajectory that I saw coming out of veterinary school was that I was going to work and learn how to be a doctor and, and really get my feet under me that way. But I knew that I was the kind of person that, that didn't want to work for someone else for the rest of my life. And I'd, I'd already had mentors in my life, um, a dentist in particular that was a good friend of our families who, who had built dental practices. And I'll never forget, he said early on, even as a teenager, he said, the way that you are successful in a business like dentistry or veterinary medicine is to have other people working with you, okay? So I always had that in the back of my mind. And I thought, I, got, I need to go out and learn how to be a doctor, a good one, and then I can start working on the business piece of what I want to do, because that was always part of it for me, which is, is not necessarily how people think of veterinarians. And you know, I, we're, we're, we're the caregivers. And I had that piece of me too, but then I also, and a scientist, you know, that, that really liked the, the science part and then I also had the piece where I wanted to be a business person and probably my upbringing and entrepreneurial family and dinner table conversations that happened at my house were always about business and so I um, we, we actually had our first child and, and decided it was time to, to get away from Hawaii and get back towards family and at the time it was actually going into 2009-2010 when the economy wasn't great and and there weren't a lot of jobs out there even you know for veterinarians and I had a very specific place that I wanted to go um, and so I, I just said you know what this is the time I've been doing this for five years I know how to do the medicine and why not so actually uh, purchased the first truck while still in Hawaii um, and had it it was being delivered and we uh, moved and you know stayed with family for a while while we got kind of our feet under us with the practice and I started um, two days a week myself and a technician in a truck and uh, walked into the market cold and just said this is what we want to do and you know what inspired how to do it was it was different. I see veterinary medicine as an experience 
for people and pets. And I wanted to do something different that created a different experience for them. I, I, I think that there's a lot to be said about what we do, and we can certainly get into you know, how, what that means, but it resonated with me. Being a horse vet, you always go to the people. So there was already that model where it's like, this is how I interact with somebody in their own environment, even if it's at a barn and not their house, right? Why can't we do that with, with small animals as well? And in this case, we end up doing it with all different animals for our business. It's not just the dogs and cats, but... Um, so I, that's, we, we started the practice and it grew from you know, two days a week and then suddenly I was busy enough that I needed to, to do three and four and then it got to the point where, well, I can't work every day so I need to hire another veterinarian on and then we were seven days a week in one truck and then that truck got full and it's like, okay, what do we do now? Are we gonna stick where we are? You know, you have two choices. You either start turning people away or you buy another truck. And so we got another truck and you know, we filled that truck up and so now we've got two running you know, at that practice and, and then got the opportunity to expand even from there. There's an innate intimacy to how we do this, right? So you, 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 when you're in someone's house, it's a, it's a different relationship. I am a guest in their house versus them being a guest in mine. It changes the entire conversation. It's, it's much, it, the stress level goes down for the pet and the owner and the vet, okay? Because I'm not working with someone who's had to put a cat in a box or had to put their dog in the car, driven to the vet, is already worried about how their animal is going to react to the situation, walks in, sits in a waiting room for you know, however long, has to wait, right? They've got many other things they'd rather be doing. The dogs were barking around them. There's odd smells in the air often. Their dog may be very nervous. Their cat may be screaming in a box. You know, all of these are cortisol-inducing events for a human being, right? I mean, they're all very stressful events. And then they go into a room by themselves, and they sit there for a while, right? And then here I come in as a veterinarian. And this is how I practice for a long time, and it's the way, and even a very intimate, wonderful, you know, veterinary practice, it's, it's the way it is. And so I'm already at a disadvantage in communicating with that client, you know, because they're already in a heightened state by the time I get to them. If, and the dog, or the cat for that matter, right? They're already kind of worked up by the time we get, get to them. So in this situation, you're gardening, you're doing whatever in your home that you need to be doing, your pet's happy on their bed, I walk in the door and we have a conversation. Everybody's kind of, you know, relaxed in their own home environment. It's intimate. We can have a conversation about why I'm there. Maybe you are stressed because your dog's ill. I understand, you know, we understand that. Um, but you're just innately more comfortable in your home, usually. And, um, and so I can have those conversations because I have to be able to communicate with the client before I can do any medicine for the pet, right? Um, and then the pets are often much easier to deal with in a, in a sense and much happier to be examined and they're very close to their owners. They're not being taken away from their owners. They're, you know, all of those, all of those factors just make it a completely different experience. I mean, that's really what it is. The medicine at a veterinary clinic is wonderful. The same as the medicine we're doing, right? Um, high, you know, very high quality veterinary medicine. It's not, it, that's not necessarily the difference, although there are some differences of, and we'll go into that of, of things that change because the animal's not stressed, okay? So there are actually some differences in the medicine if we can get to an animal that's not stressed. Think about taking a blood pressure, right? If I take a blood pressure on an animal in a clinic, is it gonna be different? They get white coat syndrome just like humans do, you know? Is it gonna be different than at home? Yes, it is, you know? Um, cats' blood work will actually change if they're stressed. Um, now we can overlook that, but if we don't have to because they weren't stressed when we took it, that's obviously better and more accurate. Um, a diabetic cat, I actually can't get an accurate reading on a diabetic cat usually in a, in a clinic because their glucose goes through the roof when they're stressed out. So if I can do that at home, it, it changes the game also. So there are medical benefits, but truly the benefit is a stress-free, more intimate you know, relationship with your doctor and, and, the, and the technician that comes with us, and they're like nurses for us, um, you know, and I can see the animal's environment. Um, I'm, I'm looking at their environment. I'm seeing where they are, especially with cats. You know, if a cat's peeing outside the litter box and we're trying to figure out, is this physical, is this behavioral? I can see the environment. I can see where they are. Oh, there's a new baby in the house, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe there's actually a behavioral component to this. Or, oh, you know, this cat, there's three other cats. And I wouldn't necessarily know that looking at a cat in a, you know, in a, in a room. Now, you can ask those questions, but you don't always get to all the questions. You know, you don't, it's, sometimes you don't know what questions to ask. So often my questions change because I'm sitting in their environment, right? Um, maybe there's four kids running around and, and the dog's like, oh my God, and you know, there's some behavioral component there. Um, I've actually been in situations where I diagnosed it because of the, 
of the, the environment. There's a lead poisoning once that happened because of that. So um, this very young dog was having odd, very odd signs and we couldn't, you know, it, it didn't make any sense in the conversation I was having and we're, okay, well, we're going to do some blood work and we're going to try to figure out if we can decipher what's going on. And I'm sitting there and there's this old stove and she's got a, a baby gate around it and she didn't have any kids. And I kind of looked at her and I said, well, you know, why is the baby, oh, the dogs chew on the stove all the time. <laughs> You know, and, and the lead, there was lead paint is what we figured out that the dog was getting to. And, uh, you know, we may have gotten there eventually with a lot of testing, but it would have been more expensive and it would have potentially not ever gotten there. You know, I wouldn't have known to ask in, in the room necessarily based on the fairly vague signs that that particular dog was having um, if that would have been an issue. So anyway, so little, little things like that, that, that we've come up with. And, and obviously that dog did fine because, you know, it was, it was, it was, we, we, we removed the, uh, the issue and everything was okay. But, um, so things like that, that we can do differently. It's interesting. People say, oh, you must be a vet because you love animals. I, I do. I, I really enjoy animals. I really like people. Um, and so I, I have, I, I like having conversations with people. I like learning about them. I like learning about, you know, their lives. And so the intimacy with this type of practice where I get to meet their families, you know, I get to see their kids. I get to, the kids get to be with the stethoscope and that kind of thing. So I guess what I'm saying in, in answering your question is some of the people stand out to me, right? Um, one of them is, is there's a, a woman who lived at a assisted living facility, okay, which we do all kinds of different clients, but one of them is people who can't drive that you're, or it's difficult to drive the pet to the, to the clinic, right? And, uh, Huggins was this dog's name. And, uh, Barbara was the woman's name, and Barbara loved Huggins. Huggins is why Barbara got up in the morning and probably kept her going longer than she would have. And um, we did lose Barbara not, not too long ago. And, and Huggins was her life. She would get up, she'd walk the dog, it kept her active, she would come. But she also really was worried about Huggins. And so we would go and see Huggins fairly regularly. Like I was out there at least two times a month just to check on Huggins, you know, whether Huggins really needed it or not. But we developed this great relationship over that time. And, and even to the point where I could say, Barbara, do I really need to come see Huggins today? You know, um, but, but there were, all, and Huggins did have some issues so we, we were working through those and um, but those sorts of relationships that I get to, to develop with people and with their pets they're life-changing for me I'll never forget them you know they were a wonderful pair and they made me smile every time I came you know and and she was a very religious woman and at one point she had um, some monks over to talk to her and so she brought the monks in the truck and she was showing us you know I, this is where Huggins this is Huggins doctor and she did you know it's just I mean who you can't you can't make those stories up, you know. I mean, they're 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 just they're they're real and they're very human. Um, and I and I think that that is one of the reasons that I enjoy it. We were at a client's house the other day, um, a young man, and he has these two kitties. And he said he was very sheepish. And he says, you know, I just I just haven't taken them to the vet. They haven't been in seven years. And I said I said why? And he said because I couldn't stomach the fact of putting them in a box and putting them through that. I just couldn't. I, I, was, I, I feel like a bad owner. I said, you're not a bad owner. You know, these kitties stay inside and they've been fine and they've been healthy. And yes, we want to get them vaccinated and all that. But, we, but he said, but as soon as I found out that you could come to me and you could do this at my house, I felt like I could, th th that I could actually t care for my cats without worrying about their welfare in the process. And so we went out and we saw the cats and they were in great shape and we gave them their shots and updated everything and then found that their teeth were not so great and I said listen I you know they really need their their teeth clean one in particular had some gingivitis going on and and he you know you could see him kind of go oh god what's that mean and I said I we're going to do it in your driveway like you know we're going to do it in our truck they'll I'll have them out there you know for two hours you're welcome to come in and see what we do and all that and see the truck and um and he just visibly relaxed and was like you can do it here and I said yeah so we were so that, those kitties are now going to get care and get a teeth cleaning and get all the things that they need, without now that, that this is an option for him because it just it was it was too hard for him to see their, his cats go through that and any other things. So you know stories like that that you feel like you're doing good not only for the pets but for the people involved, right? And then you know at home euthanasia, it's not the the happiest subject, you know. But when I can help an animal transition at home under their favorite tree with their family surrounding them in a private environment where the family's not dealing with the public around them and not having to walk out of the exam room when they're grieving and all of those sorts of things. You know, people say, how do you do that? How do you, how do you, you know, end, end that life? 
those animals are ready to go for whatever reason, right? There, there's something going on that, that makes them, they're suffering. There's something, we, we make that decision in, that, in the light of that. If I can do that in an intimate environment with those clients and I can give them an experience that's as positive as possible in that not so positive situation, that feels amazing to me, you know. Um, it, it feels amazing to me for the pet and, and for the people, you know. And people are so thankful that they don't have to take their hurting, usually, animal, put them in the car, take them to the vet, and, um, and every vet gets that. I, we get so many referrals from stationary clinics and, that say, you know, this person wants an at-home euthanasia and we're fully supportive of that. It's not something we do. Can you go do it? You know, I mean, it, every vet understands, I think, that that, that is a, a really intimate, wonderful transition to give an animal and a family. So, so we do a lot of that, you know, and then we take care of all of the, the things afterwards for the family too, and that makes it an easier, an easier experience for them. So, you know, I, it's, it's hard not to love what you do when you have all that option, you know, and then, and then also I get to build a business around it and have a staff with me that, that is amazing and wonderful and, and happy, you know, and, and loves what they do too and, and gets what we're doing and all of that. So it's a good, you know, lots of good reasons to wake up in the morning. So the units that we use are 26 feet long. They're a, a little bit of akin to a motor home, but they're purpose built, okay? We have a, a wonderful company out of Ohio, uh, LaPoite, that builds these for us and works very closely with us on, on what we like and what we don't. And, you know, we'll customize things for us as much as we want. Um, you know, Connie's my best friend. She and I talk a lot. Um, and so we, we, uh, we built out these, these units and we've learned over time, you know, what works really well for our company and, and, and our animals and our pets. And, they are um, equipped with an exam room and then a surgery suite that's separate, okay, that has a door that closes and all that. And actually our anesthetic machines can go back and forth. And so uh, we can do things that are what we call, you know, dirty or not sterile, right? You know, the, the things that are like mouths. When you're working on a mouth and you're cleaning teeth, that's not a sterile environment, right? We're, we're cleaning back, we're, we're by definition cleaning bacteria and plaque off teeth. So we do that out in, in, on our wet table, which is actually the exam table pops off. It's now multi-purpose. We can do it on the wet table underneath. Um, if we're doing something like a spay, a neuter, a mass removal, a bladder surgery, anything um, that is a sterile procedure, we're going to do that in the, in, the, in the surgery suite where we keep everything really nice and, and ready for that. So um, same standard of care as a regular clinic. We've got all the same monitoring equipment. If anything, there's more attention being focused on that particular pet. There's not other things going on in the clinic. That's all we're doing. We're there. We're doing that procedure with your pet. The doctor and a technician are are there with, with only your animal. So, um, and we only choose procedures that it's appropriate for the animal to wake up in the truck, recover, and walk out of the truck and be taken back in the home and have any pain control can be man, you know, managed by the owner. So outpatient type things. Um, we're not gonna do any procedure where it is appropriate for the animal to be on IV fluids or you know, you know, IV pain medication or things like that. Those are things where we're gonna draw the line and say, you know, we think this would be better performed there, but there's very rarely those situations. I mean, it, it, most of what a general practitioner does where it is able to be performed um, in one of these vehicles. We can take x-rays. So we have um, full digital x-ray machines that are able to either exit the truck or be in the truck. And, you know, we use that exam table multi-purpose again for, for the tube to be on top. And then we have a digital machine. So, and then those radiographs nowadays all go to a computer that can be sent to any specialist we'd like them to very quickly and get an answer right away. Um, we have ultrasound capabilities as well, so we can do an ultrasound right there in the truck. So, you know, one of the ways that we're sort of differentiating ourselves from some of the other um, mobile services out there is that we are able to do those diagnostics, okay? Um, if I came in my car, I could do an exam, I might be able to pull some blood work, I might be able to give some vaccinations and give you some advice, but am I gonna be able to get that extra step of, you know, your dog's vomiting and has been for two or three days and there's a sock missing, we probably ought to take an x-ray, you know? Um, so things like that, or, 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 we've, or we've lost that ball, or you know, we, we found pieces of this and now we're vomiting, like let, let's take an x-ray and make sure everything's moving through like it should. I can actually do that right there. I can get that diagnosis right there, right? So, so that's what's different about the vehicles that we use is we, we have that, that option to do that. We have a scale. We can get a real weight on these animals. 
Um, we have all electronic medical records. We have the ability to print out report cards for everybody. We have a full pharmacy, so if we need to leave medications, we can do it immediately. We're perfectly happy to have people get things, you know, online and stuff as well if they if they need to. Um, but but the convenience of us being able to leave it, you know, if, if your dog needs antibiotics, you want to start that right away, or pain medication or whatever, we're able to, to leave those with you. Um, we also have courier services and such for refills for medications. Some people just prefer to get them from us. They trust the source, as it were. Um, and so if that's the case, then, then we're happy to, to deliver those um, to, to people as well. And we'll do that with samples. Say we need, uh, you know, we need to recheck that, that fecal sample or that urine sample. Can you collect that for us to the owner and then we'll send somebody out to come and get it for them. So we try to make it a very um, convenient, stress-free, just a wonderful experience so veterinary care doesn't have to be something negative. Vets here is a company that is very much trying to to change the way people look at veterinary medicine. And, and in a world where, you know, things are coming to your door more often, you know, than in the past, I think really we're, we're trying to educate people on what the benefits can be and, and how we can change the experience. And, you know, thing, you know, people often see us and they go, oh, it's great for people who can't leave the house. And yeah, that's a very small part of our business. I'll, I'll tell you, we have a lot of moms with kids that have multiple pets that are like, I, you know, to, to load two kids and two dogs in a car and go to a vet is not my idea of a good time today, you know, whereas we can come and, 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 and do it. And, and one, of the, one of the barriers we come up against is, is cost. You know, what, what is this going to cost? You're coming to me. I have a very different overhead in this business, and so we're actually able to, um, the cost is, is, is very competitive. You know, we have a, a, a small fee to come to the home, okay, um, and then everything else is just the same as a, as a stationary veterinarian, okay. So it's not, um, it's not cost prohibitive, and when you have multiple animals especially, that small fee to come to the home gets, you know, gets split out over those multiple animals and it becomes almost, almost a, a wash to going in and to your regular, you know, stationary clinic. Um, and your time savings. I mean, if you have three dogs and a cat, I can come and do that in a very short amount of time versus, you know, having to, to take multiple trips in that kid's situation, you know? Um, and what's the value of not having to put a cat in a box, right? I mean, really, who wants to, who wants to shove the cat in the box and listen to him scream all the way to the vet clinic and, you know, 50% of them are going to pee on the way there and then the pee's in your car and, you know, I mean, it's just, it, it's, that's, that's what we're after. We're after a better experience for everyone and we're making it cost effective for everyone uh, to do that. And, you know, we just hope that people can, can see the value in it and, and, and understand what we're, what we're after. Um, so right now we have expanded within California. We, you know, because we're not a, we don't, we don't have brick and mortar. We're, we're solely focused on this, this mobile model. We're not trying to split our attention into two different places. Um, we have two trucks um, with four doctors running seven days a week each, you know, up north of Santa Barbara. That's the flagship, I call that the mothership. That's the flagship practice. Um, that's where all of the process and all of our, our experimentation of how to do this really well has happened over the last eight years. Um, and then we have had an opportunity to expand within California. And so we're actually reaching all the way down the 101 corridor, um, down into Woodland Hills and Calabasas and all that whole area we're able to service now. And uh, that's all happened for us within, you know, the last year or so. And so as that continues, we really hope that this is a nationwide operation where we can really take this kind of service um, to everybody that, that wants it. I'm Dr. Autumn Fanning, the founder and CEO of Vets Here. We are a mobile veterinary service that is taking the stress out of veterinary care for people and their pets.